Hi, I'm Carrie from Feel Good Teaching, and today we're going to do something just a little bit different. If you're familiar with my STEM challenges, you know that I always offer a process flow templates as an extension activity. Now, this is where the students are supposed to basically write step by step how to rebuild whatever their design is. We all know that clear and precise communication is so important for all kinds of writing. And in science, this comes in particularly handy when students have to write out procedures for a lab or science experiment. So I like my students to get a lot of practice with this type of writing. And boy, do they need that practice. If you've been a teacher for a while, you're probably familiar with the step-by-step how to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich activity, but I was looking for something that could be done a little bit more quickly, a little bit more consistently, and a whole lot less sticky. With that in mind, I created some task cards to practice this essential skill. You can use them with a variety of age groups. I call them speak, listen, draw cards, and they're fantastic because they can be used to practice academic vocabulary, things like measuring, estimation, geometry, speaking and listening comprehension, as well as reading and writing. On top of that, they're actually pretty fun. Last year, I brought them home for Thanksgiving and people in my family from ages four to 34 wanted to get in on the fun and improve their skills. And I'll be showing you a few clips throughout this video of them working on these cards. Why don't we quickly try one out for fun? Pause the video, go grab yourself a piece of scratch paper and a pencil and we'll get started. In the center of the page, draw a square tilted on its side so that one vertex is pointed up and slightly to the right, sort of like a diamond. Coming off of the bottom vertex of the square, Draw a small equilateral triangle, about one quarter the size of the square. Connected to the vertex pointed to the right, draw a circle about the same size as the square, maybe a tiny bit smaller. Coming off the vertex pointed left, draw another equilateral triangle, but this one is about the same size as the square and circle. Ready to see how you did? Were my directions perfect? Probably not. Did you find yourself wanting to ask clarifying questions? I would guess yes. I'm gonna walk you through a few different ways to use this activity, including ways to up the difficulty if you wanna give your students an extra challenge. You'll wanna partner students up. One student is the director and gets a card that has a drawing on it. The other student is the illustrator and they just get a blank sheet of paper. I usually have the students put up file folder dividers because I don't want the director or the illustrator to see what the other one has on their paper until the very end and the director is only allowed to use words, no talking with their hands or motioning in order to give the directions. One thing to consider is whether or not you want to allow the illustrator to ask clarifying questions of the director. Now at the beginning when students are first using these activities, I always allow clarifying questions, but one way to increase difficulty over time is to start to take that opportunity away. Meaning the illustrator is not allowed to speak at all. They must simply do their best job based on the directions that they're hearing from the director. Divide that rectangle into four pieces. Um, like a so line across and like a line across, down the middle. So that it's like a, a T. Another interesting way to do this is in groups where there's one director and three illustrators. Now in this case, we want dividers so that nobody can see what is going on in anybody else's cards. What I like about this approach is it makes it sort of clear for both the director and the illustrator how they're doing with their speaking or listening skills. Because if, for example, all three illustrators have the same mistake from the original card, well, that's probably something that the director needs to clarify. On the flip side, if one illustrator has something sort of strange on his or her card, but the other two didn't, well, then maybe that's an indication that the illustrator either wasn't listening very carefully or maybe there was some academic vocabulary used that he or she was not familiar with. Another variation I really enjoy is something I call around the world. Now in this one, every student in the class has a director card and they'll probably have, let's say three or four illustrator cards because this is going to be done in several rounds. So as student one, I give my directions to student two, they draw. Student two gives the directions to me, I draw. We can give each other feedback, but then right after that, we're gonna switch and get a new partner, but we're gonna keep our same cards. And you'll repeat that, say, three or four rounds. So the director is getting an opportunity three or four times in a row to refine the directions on a single card. At the end, you can have them report on how they hopefully did refine and change the directions over time to make things more clear. Another way you can do around the world is to have the students actually trade their director cards before they move to round two. So that would mean whatever I illustrated in round one, I'm now taking as the director card to round two. 
Now I'm going in with the experience of what it was like to listen to the directions and what might have been unclear to me so that I can improve upon that for round two. You can probably already see a lot of different ways to use this in your own classroom, but I find that they're really great for early finishers, include them in your sub plans, and just have them handy for when you've got five minutes left in class. You can use this as a homework assignment where the students are giving directions to a parent or a sibling. You can put this into reading and writing centers. You can do a tongue-tied version similar to Taboo where there's a list of words the students are not allowed to use. You can challenge students to give the directions in the fewest number of sentences possible, which is great if you're working on compound and complex sentences. Or you can even go for the fewest total number of words. Now you can use pretty much any kind of drawings for these, but if you wanna save some precious time, check out the resource. This resource gives your students consistent, quick practice with speaking and listening, estimation and measurement, geometry, and even reading and writing depending on how you use them. You'll get an introduction overview with logistics and setup considerations. In teacher tips, you'll find different ways to use the cards, ideas for increased challenge, a sample script for introducing the activity, and discussion points. You'll get 44 director's cards, four per page. You'll also find illustrator's cards and pages you can use in reading and writing centers. This resource is set number one in the Speak, Listen, Draw series. You may also like the Halloween set and the Halloween freebie to try before you buy. Links can be found in the description below the video. I hope you and your students have a great time with this. Make sure you like, subscribe, follow, what have you, so you don't miss anything. I hope you have a great week packed with feel-good teaching moments. I'll see you next time.